Hey guys, welcome to the Wedding Pros Podcast. Today we're having a conversation with Francie Dorman and Britt Cole from 42 North. They're amazing wedding planners and they're gonna tell us all their secrets. So we do, we're just gonna get right into it. We, we as um, wedding creatives, we've learned this over the years. We have a little more affinity for planners than other wedding creatives. And that like, we pretty much are like, Team planner, 100%. <laughs> and so we actually end up having a lot more conversations with wedding planners than we do with um, other creatives because we're just like, we view it as so um, symbiotic, that relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, how you guys doing? Thank you so much for being on our podcast. We're Great. so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us. <laughs> um, so why don't you guys introduce yourself to the audience and just tell us a little bit about yourselves. I'm Francie. Um, Britt and I own 42 North and Maven House Events, which is a new brand we'll tell everybody about. I'm Britt, and I have the same exact job title. <laughs> really? As Francie. Really? You're yeah. the same exact title. <laughs> yes. Um, Both owners. You know what's funny is like Jared and I run Stop Go Love, and neither of us have a real title. So we, when we were making our emails, we were like, what do we put under our names? <laughs> we yeah. change it sometimes. <laughs> we just decide what feels right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll just put, like, cinematographer. Mm-hmm. And it was like, director. What do you call it? Anyway. Um, so you guys run 42 North together. Um, and you guys, you're full service planning, right? You know what's funny? Most people, if you're watching this, in planning, I learned this recently Mm -hmm. there's like three types of planning right there's like full service month of and day of right we don't even know honestly (laughs) so this is what i maybe this has been what i've been (laughs) that's what people say yeah what does that even mean what does that mean we don't know (laughs) i think it's just how long do you work for them yeah a little i think i don't know like but regardless, I had no idea. I was just like, oh, you're what, all wedding planners do the same exact job. I've, I've since learned <laughs> it's very different, right? So tell us a little bit about 42 North and um, what you guys do with, with that awesome brand. By the way, we've worked with them a lot. They're amazing. Otherwise, they wouldn't be on our podcast. But Thanks. Tell us about 42 North. Would you like for me to do it? Okay. Um, well, 42 North is a full-service uh, firm servicing the ultra luxury market and mostly in New England. Um, and so we actually call our service concierge yeah. level, which is mm. our way of distinguishing what we do from what other planners do. So we do literally everything for our clients from the moment that we're hired until weeks after the wedding because we're typically doing these enormous build outs that require a lot of production and logistics and all of that, and that can last until the tent comes down, which is sometimes a week after the wedding. Um, And then we also have a really robust design program for our clients, so that includes doing multiple mock-ups, renderings, drawings, Mm -hmm. all kinds of fun stuff. So it's beyond boutique. We're talking concierge level. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. I think really what it means is we become whatever the client needs us to be. And if that is they don't have time to plan their wedding, but they want it to be amazing, and they sort of say, we'll see you there, and that means we have to write their invitations, help them create their ceremony, book their parents' flights to get there. I mean, really, there wouldn't be a task that we would say no to. So I think that, you know, if you go to the 42 North website, there's really not a whole lot of information on there because we don't present packages, which is, I think that what you were kind of talking about a little bit, you know, we're not portioning out, like if you go to this level of service, you get this stuff. And I think that where that came from for us was, and we can tell you about how we started the business later, but that came from just like observing all of those different types of planners in our previous careers and seeing that even if that planner had been taken on to do like the quote lowest level of service, there's still, you know, it's a really hard line to draw with a client to say like, no, I'm not going to do that thing for you because it's not included in your package. So we came out the gates saying that we just want to do everything. We want to be involved in every little detail of the wedding so that also when we're there executing, you know, we 
there's nothing that we don't know about the wedding. Like, we're in control of everything, including, like, where all of the family members are and how they got there and all of that. Kind what of everyone's thing. wearing. And yes. What accessories they're supposed to be wearing at each moment of the day. Exactly. I mean, we the fashion part of it is a whole other thing. Um, I mean, yeah, that we are definitely styling bridal parties and you know that down to the shoes and like helping them shop for all that kind of thing so it's it seems like one of those dream scenarios but i'm sure you guys would tell us and I'm, and this is obviously you're, we're great oh we're all grateful for our clients mm -hmm. we don't crap talk our clients we love our clients they're amazing but like i'm sure that it's way harder than like a lot of people like this is what i really want to do yeah. Right. And then, then they do it. And then it's like, it's probably really crazy and challenging, right? It is, which is why we're very expensive. To yeah. <laughs> well, it's like yeah. that level of service, right? Well, it's right? not easy, but it's, uh, I mean, we, from the very beginning, knew that that's what we wanted to do. There wasn't another thing that we wanted to do. We wanted to do it at this level mm -hmm. um, because I think probably deep down inside, both Francie and I are a little bit control people mm -hmm. and there's nothing worse than investing a ton of time into a client and having that client choose the completely wrong wedding dress, dress or something that just throws the whole brand and look of the wedding into a place that it shouldn't be and now suddenly you know we can't really use that wedding you know the photos or whatever it may be but more so I think just creating I mean we feel like people hire us for that level of service, but also that level of style, mm -hmm. and you know, we we vision. and the vision, yeah. And, and I would I would say, in being around some of your weddings, but also being close in the market and watching, pretty much they're weddings that are designed to be published. Yeah, I mean, even if that's not what the intention is, like, yeah, if, if you're externally viewing it, you're like, this is super curated, like. It's the stuff that gets put in those magazines and because it's so cohesive. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that we don't necessarily design the weddings to be published, but all of our weddings pretty much are published because they are cohesive. Because it looks and that, thematic and planned. Yeah. I mean, we only start working with people from the very beginning of the plans, so... Um, that sometimes includes a venue search, but a lot of our clients are planning private home weddings. So we're really there from the moment that they decide to have this wedding, pretty much. So we're able to create the vision before anything is done. Mm -hmm. And would, that's what creates that fully look, curated. Yeah. But I also think there's something that's a little bit funny about this, because I would say if I had to put a number to it, like 75% of the work that we do is not in the photos. Like, we, yeah. our weddings are not dripping in decor. They're not dripping in details. Like, they're really not. No. That's not what we do. I, I would say if that's what somebody wants, we would probably refer them elsewhere because that's not our style. I think our style is more like understated elegance and letting the moments and the backdrops and all that Experi kind of thing. The guest the experience. experiences, like, speak for themselves. So... I actually think it's amazing that our weddings have gotten picked up by so many different publications over the years because they're not like I they're not dripping and everything. I think that we also have been very lucky and it's been intentional that we created a brand that we hoped would sort of bring in people who do have an elevated level of style. So most of our clients like who come to us, it's not like they they need a ton of help in the world to choose the right dress or, yeah. you know, any of that kind of a thing. Um, well, you work with a lot of other good people, too, which, you know, you're in charge of that kind of. Yeah. You yes. choose who you work with. Yeah. <clears throat> but the people you work with are part of that cohesion. Yes. Totally. We are and very I'm, intentional about the way that we build our vendor teams because that's what creates the wedding. And there's you know, the right team for one client is going to be the completely wrong team for another client. Um, so we're thinking from the beginning, like, okay, here's the vision for the wedding. Who's going to photograph that correctly to make it look like what the vision is and also part of our portfolio and all mm -hmm. that. Well, if you're a wedding creative and 
or a planner and you're watching this and you're kind of going like, how do I get where these people are? One of the things I would most tell people is like, really realize like, if you can get on the good side of the people who have the clients that you want, and not just get on the good side, like you can't just send them coffee or wine or something, <laughs> but, you, but like make them look good. Make mm-hmm. them yeah, do a good job. Add to the client yeah. experience, be part of their vision, compliment it. It'll pay dividends for you because you want that person to look at you and say like, they're part of the vendor team I'm imagining for this client. Yeah. And the, and the better you serve your vendor friends, the better you will fit into their vision of that day. Um, so how did you guys decide weddings? Because, I mean, clearly you guys could run whatever you wanted to run. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can tell you about how we started. Do you want to? Sure. So um, my background before starting in weddings, I was an executive assistant, and I worked in a lot of different hospitality um, arenas. I opened a couple of restaurants and whatever. So I have always been very focused on like experiences for people, helping people to do jobs that they don't want to do. And um, so I worked for another planner for a long time, which was a really great experience. I learned so, so much from that job about how things should be done and also how they shouldn't be done. Um, And then when I left that firm, I was working at the Crane Estate as the event manager there. Um, I wanted to stay in the industry but not be a planner for a little bit. And the Crane Estate is right down the street here. And it was a really great experience. Beautiful, beautiful place. So while I was working there, Britt was managing a catering company that was um, on the exclusive list there. And we did 60 weddings together over the course of three years. years. Yeah. 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 So we worked really closely together and just realized that, like, there was a natural sort of division of duties when we were working together. And we worked together very, very well from the very beginning. Um, And we worked with a lot of other planners. Yeah. (laughs) And it's actually pretty funny because I had no experience in events at all. (laughs) When I got the job I had with no the catering company, either. yeah, I mean, I had no plans really to go into the hospitality in- industry. I, I mean, I guess the truth is I had no plans. <laughs> uh, I was one of those graduated college and then like sort of messed around a little bit. I worked summers here on the North Shore on a boat and then I would travel and I did, you know, a bunch of different trips to South America and I was working on organic farms and like a totally different life it feels like I was living. Um, and then, I don't know, a couple of years into doing that, I ended up back here and I was waitressing and I was at a party somewhere and the owner of the catering company I ended up working for was catering. And I don't know, we started talking and he was like, I need a salesperson. And I was like, I need a job. So that sounds good. I'll call you next week. So I ended up working for this, this company, which is a super high end, like really great catering company here and, um, on the North shore. And I think maybe like a month into working there, they had me manage an event at the crane estate, which at the time was very intimidating. I mean, the weddings that I was seeing come out of the crane estate were unbelievable. And I didn't know anything about running a wedding. Like I had maybe been to one wedding, (laughs) like as a guest at that point. And I think the reason why it worked for me was because I just can walk into a situation and kind of say like, I can do this. Like it's not rocket science. Like let's just get it together. And it happened to be Francie who was with me on that first wedding. And then, you know, so, so many more after that. And it was just like all of a sudden I felt like this is something that I could do. The stars Um, aligned. Yeah, they really really did. did. And then there was another kind of funny detail about it. We had been working together for three years, and but we were only work friends and really only during wedding season too because you don't really see each other that much on the off season. And Hmm. I think It's weird how that works. Like you just work with people all the time and you you never talk to them. No, no. And I mean, so how many years ago? This is like six or seven years ago now. I don't know. Yeah, maybe more. Anyways, we weren't even Facebook friends, which sounds crazy because I feel like now when you meet someone, like you're immediately like following them on Instagram or whatever. I pretty much won't Facebook friend 
anyone. Well, I Facebook is not yeah. something I mean, we really this, use we're talking about anyway. yeah, Well, no, is, it's <laughs> just like there's this weird like. I do think what you're really saying is like there's this natural if you're like in the wedding industry, maybe other industries, but I know in the wedding industry, mm-hmm. like this is my real life. Yeah. This is my wedding life, and yeah. they don't talk. No, right. not really. Yeah. They don't mean. And so that's what it was with us. And so I think at the end of like that third season, I will say I asked Francie if she wanted to be my friend, <laughs> like in real life. Yeah. Like, and she said, yeah, of course, sure. Like, let's have coffee. And so I think shortly after that, I did friend her on Facebook. And what happened was she realized that my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband, was someone that she grew up with. Like, she went to the Waldorf school. You can kind of Yeah, tell. so we went to... The Waldorf School locally here, which there were eight people in our entire grade. So I really grew up with her husband. He was like a <laughs> brother to me, basically. Yeah, and we, had, we didn't even know that. So I think that when we made that connection, it was just all of a sudden it just felt like this is somebody who is sort of like already in my life. Yeah. And so long story short, I guess, we had coffee one time. And I think like on the second time we hung out, we had this thought like we should just be doing this on our own and because I think a lot of the conversations that we were having were watching the planners that were coming to the crane estate and we would have these meetings around this big table with the client usually the client's mom and then Francie who's managing the venue and then myself who's managing the catering team and and it just felt like so much of that could have been better (laughs) I think that the planners that we were working with were mostly working for the moms. Like, they were mm-hmm. not really working for the bride or the client at that time. Or even making a good wedding. No, right. and also, it like, using formulaic. antiquated, like, yeah. tools, you know, literally dragging in these big binders with all the paperwork printed out. And we were kind of like, get with it. Like, there's <laughs> a lot of technology we could be using. And so we had this idea at the same time, and I think what worked about it is that we really were not close friends. We were yeah. still just, like, really getting to know each other on, like, a friendship level, and so we wrote a business plan, which has never seen the light of day. <laughs> but we did. We took, like, almost a, a year, a year yeah. to really sit down and write it, because we didn't know each other. It wasn't like we had been friends since childhood or whatever and had always wanted to start a business together we had to be on the same page business wise before we could actually start the business so that we could be sure that we were that we had the same goals and that we were going to be successful Jared and I when we started he was I taught Jared in high school Um, I taught him (laughs) video because I was like 22 years old and I was like, oh, somebody like a school needed someone to teach like yeah, a small, yeah. a one course of video a week. And I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll do it. <clears throat> and I taught him in high school and then he went to school, he went away and he came back home and I was like, oh, these people, like, he was like, have you heard about these new cameras? And I was like, no. And he's like, oh, you can shoot video on these DSLRs. And I was like, oh, that looks way more cinematic. And I was like, we could do, we can do weddings. All those are terrible. Yeah. And I was like, we could do that. And then we were just like, and then we started. I was like, yeah. he called me. He was like, yeah, I'm coming home. I'm like, yeah, I just went to, and I spent 10 grand at the store and I, <laughs> on credit card. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, for us, there was no startup cost. That's the thing about being a wedding planner. There's none of yeah, that. So need... we could really just dive in. I yeah. know. I mean, I think, too, probably something that's important to say, because if people are watching this and they're wondering, like, well, that sounds easy, but it doesn't feel easy because it wasn't. I mean, the reality was that we both kept our jobs for a long time. Right. Um, and we were in different points in our life. Francie That's my just, number one tip, by the way, to people. Like, well, when am I looking to go full time? I'm like, when, when you, you literally money. cannot right. do yeah. both your jobs. And that's what happened. So yeah. Francie had just had her second child. And so she, her life was just sort of Very made full. up in a different way. She had her children and she was working part time at the Crane Estate. And that worked for her. I didn't have kids at the time. And I had a full-time job that I was working like 50 hours a week at the catering company, which, by the way, I can get into it later, but was like the best way for me to learn events, like hands Mm -hmm. down the best way for me to Catering people have the most crazy schedules. We couldn't do what we do if Britt didn't have her catering background because we do so many private home weddings and she needs to know like how to do a power plan and how to 
you know, do a rental yeah. order that's not going to be wrong. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, and how to vet these catering companies. We're usually in the middle of nowhere when we're doing these weddings because it's people's second home or whatever. <clears throat> and there's just so much that she knows that I never learned just as being a wedding planner because it, there's no unless you've done it, there's no real way to learn it. Right. And I think that like when I was doing it, I wasn't saying to myself, like, I'm doing this because I want to become a wedding planner. Never, it was just sort of, I was working like crazy. And I've, and I think the other thing about Francie and I is that we both had jobs from like age 12. Like yes. we both have always worked. Like we are just hustlers by nature. Like we, that's just the way that we are. And I think that that is a reason why. So you don't just, us, you don't just, work less and get paid more. No. <laughs> we work a lot. A we lot. work a lot more than we get paid. Yeah. But the idea is to make money. I yeah. mean, that's why we started this business. Yeah. yeah. So we were both working these other jobs and I was working full time. And so we were like, you know, I'm sure that a lot of people have a similar story. Like I was jumping on a conference call, like in my car, mm -hmm. telling my boss that I was just going home to meet the cable guy really quickly <laughs> or whatever. Um, and we were putting on a little bit of a facade, mm -hmm. I would say, to our clients. But I think the thing that was pretty amazing, I will say, was we had been doing this and really trying to make it work. And it was going pretty well. And we both were working like crazy. The moment for me when I decided I had to take a step back was I got pregnant with my twins. And I remember I was like in the hospital, had the twins. I had decided to leave my job. We were going full time with this and we got named Best of Boston that year, which at the time and still is, it's like a great thing, mm -hmm. you know? And I just remember kind of like, that was the first time that I was like, okay, that's kind of badass. Like we both have other jobs. I just like popped out two kids. <laughs> Francie's working like nuts. And yeah. we've only been doing this for like two years and somebody's already telling us that we're the best at it, which was like, we're, I don't know, we're, we're, we're not moment. the best. <laughs> we're not, <laughs> we're not the best, but like, we're not the best. You know Boston. what I mean? It was, I thought that that someday. was a cool moment. Someday we can aspire to be best. Boston. <laughs> I just want to make the most money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And best does not always mean yes. that you're making the most money. I'd say probably it never means that. <laughs> so. so, so you guys started this high end brand and everything was perfect. There was no issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you say, like, was the biggest, like, wake-up call when you kind of started your own thing where you were like, whoa, we, like, we knew all this, and now we're running a business, and this is not something we really knew? So there have been a million times that that has happened. We outsource a lot of stuff. Like, we are not accountants, and we never have been, and we've been outsourcing that from the beginning. So I a lot of those types of moments have come and we've just said, like, let's focus on what we're good at. And that has evolved over time, too. Um, but there have also been the moments where it's like, oh, we might run out of money. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, we, the, oh, we need to take out a loan yeah. or whatever. In and, the beginning, because we had other incomes, the things didn't feel like as real. Like mm. it kind of felt like sweet. We're making like yeah. side money or whatever. <laughs> and then when that stopped side money stage, stakes, by the way, is the least pressure. If you're yeah. in the side money stage and oh, you enjoy can, it, you're making so much money. Up. You have like a paycheck and then you have these like chunks of money coming in that feel felt at the time, like free Huge. money because we were yeah. so excited to be yeah. doing it. And we had spent so much time planning the company and, visualizing what the brand was going to be like and how we were going to like live and breathe that. And so it was so exciting and we just had so much energy. I mean, we could work 80 hours a week and it was fine. So now mm. I think when we went and we decided to do 42 North, there were moments where it didn't feel as good because we weren't making as much money and we mm -hmm. had to, from the beginning, one of the things that we always agreed on was like, if we're going to do something, we're doing it really well. So that's like the website we didn't just like make our own website. Like we paid someone a lot of money <laughs> to make our beautiful website that has not changed once since we launched it five years ago. And we're so glad that we spent the money on it because it's held up. Like people still tell us that our website is beautiful. It's so simple, but it is, it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, when we decided to make other business decisions about like, should we spend on a PR team? You know, that 
was a big decision because it's really expensive to have a PR team, and we have the best yes. PR As you team know. Yes. and good company <laughs> PR. They're, Actually, they're Natalie best. has been with us since the very beginning of our business, yeah, like before we even really started the business. She's kind of like... We, we always say she's like a fairy. She's just yeah. floating oh, around yeah. New England. Yeah. <laughs> Everything Spreading good. her magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When she first launched, I was like, what do you do? Oh, yeah. Well, she was like, and she's like, oh, this, this. And it wasn't a good fit for us at the time. Yeah. But I was like, and then you start seeing, you're like, oh, it's hard to really explain. But then when you see it in yeah. action, you're like, okay, there's a real impact with this person. Here's what I've seen with you guys and with a range of just the best people that we know is um, there's an uncompromising approach towards what you know will make your brand what the brand is. Mm -hmm. And it might not be some of the things that some people think, like, oh, I'm only, I will only ever use the finest of linens. Right. Or something like that. Like, someone would put their foot in the ground in that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not the fight you want to win. You don't want to die on that hill. The, the, <laughs> like, the linens hill. Right. But there's things about it that every wedding <clears throat> looks like a 42 North wedding. So what would you describe the work? Like, so that, what's the calling card? I mean, it's amazing that you say a 42 North wedding because we sat at Francie's kitchen table every Tuesday night with rotisserie chicken and Greek salad mm. planning our business. And the thing that we always said is that we want people to say, I want a 42 North wedding. And that's, I mean, you can take this one because it's, it's a little, like, hard to explain how you, we got there. Yeah, so, I mean... Actually, when we first started the business, we were not offering design. We were planners only. And we thought we wanted to do it that way because we wanted to collaborate with all different designers and florists and whatever. Um, and we quickly learned that the relationship between planning and design is so reliant on one another that it wasn't working to not have that piece in-house. And we just kind of said to one another, like, we can do this. We both have good taste. We both know what we like. And we both know what we want the weddings to look like. And to us, it's, it's very simple. It's understated elegance. And it's really looking more at how the guests and the clients are going to interact with the design rather than what it all looks like. Like the napkin is the perfect napkin that when you touch your face with it, it feels expensive. It's not gonna be like tied in some crazy way yeah, or like hidden under the napkin. chair. Yeah. <laughs> like, like where is my napkin? Like I don't want to <laughs> read. Crane. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what's funny, not to interrupt, but I am interrupting. You know when you go to like a resort in a uh, like in the Caribbean where it's not really high end, but they really want you to think it's high end, and you walk into the room and they have the towel shaped yeah, like a swan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't ever go like, wow. I know it feels tacky. You go like that's tacky. Totally. It's kitschy. It's not. It's not like. And then you go to like you got. You just came back from was it Como or yeah, it was called? Como Parrot K. Yeah, and like it's. Oh yeah, Simple. everything there is just streamlined, so, just so the yeah. Yeah, I mean it's more about the point, intentionality like, of yes. the relationship between items than it is how much time did I spend folding the napkin. Right, right. Everything I, is very intentionally chosen mm -hmm. at our weddings, and also a lot of that we've learned over the years, and we've been taught it by our clients, like the people that we think have had the most beautiful weddings. They all have their own sense of style and very high-end taste and um you know they don't necessarily want their wedding to look like it cost a million dollars even if it yeah, did they, they you know want they it want showy. it yeah. right they don't want to show well off. that's new england luxury yeah exactly yeah that, well, and that's our client so. so the other thing i will say about a 40 to north wedding is it's not it, it is about those details in the way that francie described them but it's also a lot about like the big picture. Mm -hmm. So like I can give a few examples. You know, we did a wedding in New Hampshire at our client's family home and she just knew she wanted to get married there. Like there was no option. She wanted to get married there. And when we showed up, like there wasn't a place to put a tent. Like I, it was just sort of like, what do you, okay, well, where, where do you want to get married? There's not a place to put a it tent. It was a big hill. Yeah. Um, and so because we have Francie with her 
full planning experience and design sense and then me that I can look at a challenge and say like, okay, we can do something here. You know, on that particular wedding, we built out platforms. We hired a construction company. We built out platforms on the side of the hill and did two crazy long tables. And I mean, it was one of our coolest weddings to date because it just looked like we plopped this beautiful thing in the middle of nowhere. And I think that it... It's not for the faint of heart to take on those types of projects because you're in New England and it could rain and all of that kind of thing. And you have to make the lights just perfect and, you know, figure out where the power is coming from and how people are going to get there and what it's going to feel like. Is it going to be comfortable for them? All of that kind of thing. We had another wedding recently where same thing. We showed up and it was rolling hills. I mean, the most beautiful place you've ever seen, but no idea what they were thinking. <laughs> so we ended up having to literally bulldoze the side of a hill. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, as a, as a creative, everybody wants to get married on the beach. It's the worst place in the world to shoot video. Yeah. Or to probably set up a ketubah uh, or whatever yeah. the heck you're setting up. <laughs> Which we've done on Nantucket during yeah. a hurricane. Not a ketubah. What is it? The, uh, hupa. Hupa, hupa, but hupa. there is also a ketubah. Yeah, the ketubah yeah. is a signing thing. <laughs> yeah. My Jewish friends, I do, and I do, I know about your weddings. Um, but like everybody wants to do these things because they saw a, a picture somewhere yeah. and they have all these probably ideas in their head. a photo shoot. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And then you're like, they're like, oh, I can't hear myself. I'm like, well, because the wind was blowing 30 miles an hour <laughs> and your microphone's going the whole time. And then you're, the veil, I've been at weddings where literally their veil blew away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like, and like a good planner will either tell you that's not a good idea. Yeah, that's not a good idea. And then the person will say, I want it anyway. And they'll go, okay, I'll try to make it happen. Mm-hmm. But they'll tell you that's not a good idea. And it's funny to me how people just, that's our job, right? Is to make their bad ideas good ideas. Yeah. We say no a lot. Or I don't we get say to say like, no at all. Well, no, we can't do that for the budget that right. you had in mind, but we can we can do it, but here's how and how much money it's going to cost. And so I think that that's probably a huge part of our job. Again, like when you look at the photos of our weddings, we didn't spend as much time like planning the tablescape as we did like figuring out the logistics Mm -hmm. of it and having a whole other skill set is explaining how you filter that to the client because the client doesn't need to know like every challenging detail that we're working on behind the scenes but if they're paying more than half a million dollars they kind of want to know what they're spending it on so you have to filter that through in ways that feel relevant to the client that make them feel comfortable um, but is not putting every little like a detail onto their shoulders and that's a whole and we don't know where that skill set came from like this is just stuff that we had inside of us and we have created different systems on how to keep projects organized and you know all that can we talk nerdy stuff really quick yeah Mm -hmm. what what's your go-to project management system so we live in aisle planner Aisle Planner is good. Yeah, I don't know why more people don't use Aisle Planner. Um, I use Asana uh-huh. mixed with HoneyBook mixed with Slack. Yeah, yeah. Well, we use Slack We use Slack also. internally. Um, but yeah, I mean, for us, keeping well, everything as streamlined as possible and building systems where we can, especially for Maven House, we'll, we can talk about that later. Um, Aisle planner is sort of like we live and die by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it could be better, and it's, hey, Francie's like personally. I know the on developer. The phone. Yeah, so yeah. we and I talk he to has Trevor a, a weekly call. Yeah, on what could be. He's good. What we could be using. Well, be I better. mean, it's like we're working through stuff, and it's like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could do whatever? And they're really if, open. If it could function it, in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? If you don't have tools, and you're listening to this. So our business is very different than yours, mm-hmm. but obviously because we do we don't plan weddings at all. Um, we just document them, but but it's also different in terms of we we built for scale from the beginning. Mm-hmm. We right. were like very quickly realized like there wasn't a market for this luxury video we wanted to make. Nobody wanted to buy this thing, and I was like, well, I want to work. I don't want to be <clears throat> not working, mm-hmm. and so we were like, how do we scale and. I'm a nerd, so I'm always looking for the fastest way to do something. Mm-hmm. 
and early on, we were always trying to adopt every new idea, way of making things faster. Streamlined, yeah. Very early on, we're like, what's, can we not meet with clients? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, actually, we don't have, we stopped meeting with clients and our booking rate went up. Yeah. I mean, for us, there's like a balance. But only because of technology. Right. I mean, there's a balance between using technology, which we feel like we have to because our clients are using technology in their daily lives. And part of what we do is integrate their planning into their life. But we only work with five or six clients at 42 North per year. And no matter how hard Francie has tried (laughs) to automate everything, I mean, I'm... I'm not as tech savvy as Francie is. That's the joke. But um, automate everything, use systems, create like certain ways of doing things. Like we have all that stuff in place, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't apply. Like no. the, the clients that we're working with, we really have to look at them individually. There's only five of them at a time and they all lead totally different lives. Well, they, and what you're making is different every time. Yeah. And that's yeah. really like the difference. Stop, go, love. First of all, in my opinion, is a very good business in terms of like it's scalable mm-hmm. and it's repeatable. And I know exactly what my profit's going to be right. every time I do it. And I know exactly how long it's going to take to make every right. time I do it. We're moving into another thing now called Huxley Film. And it really came out of like a desire, first of all, for Jared and I to work together. We haven't shot together and I can't yeah. remember the last time I shot with him. And I was like, that's kind of a value retraction from our clients. They're not getting mm-hmm. the best of what we can do. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want to make that, though. I'm not interested in that. Like, if I could just show up at a wedding and shoot a portrait session and leave, that's what I would do. Like, I don't want to shoot your ceremony. I'll hire an, as- an associate to do that. Because you're not getting the benefit of my talent. Mm-hmm. Anyone mm-hmm. can stand there behind a camera. I mean, that's how we feel. If we could plan your wedding but not show up, it would be better. Well, I, I like showing <laughs> up. I just don't want to shoot. The, I would rather be doing pre-production at the next set mm-hmm. for the thing that really matters. Right. For the shot and, like, hire associates to handle the I mean, it's parts. the same thing. Like, you don't need Francie or I there, like you were saying, like, picking up the trash at the end. Like, our, that's totally. not where our value yeah. is. But my value is in doing real cinema. And so we were like, well, let's make this thing. And as we've been digging into it, we're like, well, and we knew this from the beginning, like what we're doing on this one level will not work at this other. Right. Not because this client is better than that client or right. that client's. If, if I was to be honest, I'm like, the money's in stop, go love. The money's yeah. not in this mm-hmm. luxury product. Right. But... I want to make it for fun, A, and B, because we want to just, we want the challenge yeah. of doing something new and interesting. And we're realizing really quick, like, this way of interacting with clients and we, is so different than what we're dealing with. And what I think, what, if you're listening and you're a professional, I would just encourage you, don't focus on what other people tell you to do with how to acquire clients and interact with your clients. Focus on what you're trying to make and realizing like every single business that has a different vertical that you're trying to talk to wants to be interacted with in a different way. Mm -hmm. Stop, go love. We do emails and phone calls. And if you ask for an in-person meeting, we will meet with you. But we maybe meet with 10 clients a year out of 120. Right. Mm -hmm. It Like most of the, I haven't met. Um, you know what? One couple I met ahead of time this year. The other people, the first time I ever met them was when I showed up at their wedding. That'll work there. It yeah, will right. not yeah. work when I'm trying to get you to trust me to shoot with me for three days. Right. Go to this. And pay a premium. And pay a premium yeah. and all these things. And so I think you guys have seen that. So you're kind of going a different direction too. Yeah. And I don't think 42 North is going anywhere. No, no. And that experience will still maintain. But kind of what did you learn that kind of Tell them about what the new idea is and then kind of how did you arrive at that decision? With Maven House, it's literally the opposite of everything that you just said. So for 42 North, we realized that we experimented with like bringing other people into the team and like having them play a role as an associate planner, producer. And we realized very quickly that like we are 42 North, 42 North is us. Like the whole thing is that we do the job really yeah. well. And it's our unique skill sets that play together to give a client this unique experience. 
And because we are doing these really high end, very logistically challenging productions that span multiple days, we can only do a couple of them. Um, and so from a business perspective, we needed to scale the company because we need to make more money. Um, and we knew we couldn't do it under the same name because we didn't want it to confuse people. Like, totally. you know, we yeah. didn't want people to feel like, well, you can't work with me and Francie because you don't have the correct budget or whatever, or it's not the exact type of production and project that we really excel at, but you can work with a lower person. Like that, none of that ever felt right for us and it never felt right to be diluting the brand in that way, mm -hmm. so. Totally. I mean, we're having the same conversation, which is like, it's not that what we do with Stop Go Love is actually even worse. For some person, it might be exactly what they want. Right, right. And it's a totally good fit. It's a different it's thing. The, and it's based on what they value to and that what's point, important to them. Yes, we wanted, we also felt, the, the light bulb went off and we thought, okay, well, we can do another company. And then once we came, we decided that, we started to get so excited about building another brand, something that's not 40 to North, that doesn't have the same feeling at all and speaks to a totally different client mm -hmm. and a new generation. So that was exciting for us. Yeah, and throughout the lifespan of 42 North, we have, by the very nature of what we do and what we charge and all of that, we haven't been the right fit for most of pe the people who inquire with us. I and bet that just burns. Oh, yeah. yeah just people I mean, call you and you're like, no, yeah, no, no. I mean, oh, every day. Every day, right? yeah. yeah. And so for years, we've been sending clients to other planners who we, you know, think are doing a good job and that can serve this specific client in the market that they're in and all that. And finally, one day we were like, "Why are why are we're we sending doing business this? just out the door? Great every day. clients, yeah. like really nice people with a great vision and good budgets. It's not like they didn't have a good wedding budget. No. It's just not what we do. Uh, so that's where sort of the light bulb went off with us for Maven House. And um, what we've done in terms of building the services is created what people were looking for when they were coming to us without the budget for a full week-long production building a wedding venue in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've tried to do is create a product that protects the planners that are working with us from working a million hours on one specific project. Like we've tried to make it as repeatable as it possibly can be in this business by putting parameters on what's included and all that. Everything is full service, meaning your planner is involved every step of the way. But, you know, if you're getting married in Maine and your planner is based in Newport, maybe she'll drive there one time for a site visit rather than just like having that be an unlimited yeah. service. I think too, like if you, if we can sort of explain like the conversations that went on between Francie and I when we were thinking about this is with 42 North, like the reason, I think probably people are curious about us and why we charge so much. And the answer is because there's two of us and we work on every wedding together. That's the thing. Like if you yep. work with 42 North, you work with both of us. We're both copied on every email. So if you just do the simple sticky note math, <laughs> like we have to charge a lot of money for us to make a living because everything is split in half and we have to pay our overhead and all of that kind of a thing. So we don't just charge a lot of money to charge a lot of money. We offer a specific product. It's a value yes. that if a person sees it, they and then it makes sense. And if they yeah, don't, and if it fits into what it. yeah, the the scale of production that they're envisioning and planning for. Um, so we serve a specific client and that's what our business is. So we needed to create another company that could do volume and and still be able to take on these really great projects like Francie was mentioning. And so we mm -hmm. figured we had now this opportunity to do a lot of things with Maven House that we felt like the industry needed a little bit, which was to be transparent about pricing, to create very clear, un easy to understand levels of service. With Actually present timelines in nice ways. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think what we really wanted to do was allow someone who's looking for a wedding planner to go to... Can I just pause you really quick? Oh, yeah. 
how come some wedding planners have no idea how long it takes to take photos? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I will, because I think that the- this is how I know a wedding is going to be an absolute disaster cluster. <laughs> when I look at a plan, a wedding, a person's wedding thing, and it's scheduled by fifteen minute increments, right? And I'm like, what are you doing? And, and you're you on a property that spans. To, like- yeah, I'm like. I've been there. I know I'm going to need to get a thing. And like, and then they'll come to you while you're doing your portraits and be like harassing you. And you're like, the fact that you don't know how to plan a wedding doesn't mean I don't know how to take oh. portraits. So like, right. I'm going to finish what I'm doing. This person paid a lot of money for these photos. Right. Are, like, why aren't you maximizing the benefit of this vendor for this client? Probably a lack of experience, I guess. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I think with so with Maven House, I, I you won't do that. No, we won't be doing that. But I want to. We think we want to tell you a little bit about like the framework of it yeah. and the values. Tell us all about it. Yeah, yeah. I think um, we there were things that we were excited because now we can do something with another brand that we haven't been able to do with Forty Two North. Forty Two North has always been very understated. Like we don't really. We're not like crazy on Instagram. Like we don't do a lot of that stuff. We don't show ourselves all that much. We just sort of like keep it chill, and that's just part of it. I think. I think that a- I would say self-assured. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't call it. I don't view it as understated. It's very obvious to me that oh. it's high end and luxury. Okay. Well, yeah, that's it's good. intentional. Then. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's just what comes natural. Yeah. Natural yeah. To us. But with Maven House, we think we know that there's a new generation of consumers coming in that are really looking for. You're crazy about the. They have different and values. The YouTubes and yeah, they have different values. They're just not the same client. They're really looking for. They want to know what is your your value. Like, mm-hmm. what are you bringing to the table? We don't want to beat around the bush. Just tell us how much you cost mm-hmm. and what are your morals and, and business values. And, you know, they want to make sure that those align with theirs. They want to see diversity. They, you know, all of that. They want to know what you care about. Like, mm-hmm. they want to see politics on your Instagram feed. They also want to see unfiltered stuff. Like, they, everything isn't perfect and curated all the time. So we wanted to create a brand that was going to speak to this new consumer Gen Z that's going to be coming up over the next couple of years. Um, and then on the other end, it was to do volume. So we have started with four planners, um, and they can each take on up to 15 clients at the level of service that they're offering, which is nothing like 40 to North. I mean, it's, it's really much more, more collaborative. Yeah, it's a collaborative. We, it's a partnership. One of the biggest things I talk about in sales in Maybe I invented this term. I don't know. <laughs> I've never heard anyone else say it. It doesn't seem like I should have invented it, though, which is time to close. Time to close at volumes is the number one tip. Mm-hmm. If you want to do volume, you have to have a short time to close. Mm-hmm. And that is the millennial purchaser and, gen, and even the next people coming up. They want short time to close. They want to go to your website. Okay, everything's presented in a way that's very clear to me. Right. Like, this is why people are buying mattresses online, yep. paint online, toothbrushes online. They want it to be f- two right. options. Pick the one. Here's yes. the price. Clearly laid out in a grid. Everything's straightforward and simple. Because, And then they want, like, by the time some other guy's trying to wiggle around and figure out a coffee date with this person, right. I've already, <laughs> we've already sold the wedding. Right. Yeah, you can book right into our calendar on, through the Maven House website to talk yeah. to one of the planners so you don't even have to send an email. I think that a lot of couples have to spend a lot of time reaching out to wedding planners. And, and then, back and forth, yeah. 18 clock. You have to talk on the phone to get a price, which feels yucky. Strange. Well, you, yeah. there have been interactions I've seen with couples where the person had four interactions before they knew how much they were going to pay. Right. Now, with with Huxley and 42 North, there's a reason for that. Yes, exactly. The reason why I have to do that is because I have to say, let's think about your story a little. Let's think about the day. Well, if we want to go to Lake Como, but also we want to shoot in Milan, and then we have to, like, yes. it's a customized quote. There's a reason it takes so long. But if you're just like, I just want a wedding video, that's really these purchasers. Right. And that's how we feel about the Maven House client. Like, if you're getting married at a venue in Boston, we know what it takes to do that Mm -hmm. job. We know roughly how many hours your planner is going to spend, depending on how much work you've already done. Um, So we built the three partnership levels based on the times that we know people decide that they might need a planner, which is right after they get engaged after they've booked a venue and maybe like their photographer or when they're about six months out from their wedding and they're like, oh, how do we, what do we do to finish this project? 
So we built partnership levels specifically for those three times. You can go on the website, see exactly what they cost, exactly what's included in those levels. So it's about you're making it easy for people exactly. yeah, we want to, make to it know easy. what they are getting. Right. And because they know what they want. Exactly. And there might be a person out there who doesn't. So that's why it's like I think for both of us, when we're talking about, oh, I have this business and this business, I don't view them as opposed. Right. I view them as like, th- there are people who are very wealthy who just don't like to deal with crap. And they right. just want to know exactly what they're buying and they don't want this. If you ask them like, oh, here, I curated this napkin for them. They're like, mm-hmm. I don't want to hear about the napkin. I don't care right. about the napkin. Just I want to show up and it's done. Right. And you're cool and we're good to work with. That's a person. Mm-hmm. And then there's a person, they want to know every detail Yes, that's matters. the maybe house person. They have a strong vision and they just need a partner to collaborate with them to get it mm-hmm. done. And I think that that's a client that exists and it exists at the price points. I mean, the budgets that Maven House is comfortably working with are 80000 to $200,000. I bet there's probably a, like a half a million dollar couple who would rather that experience yeah. than the 42 North experience because right. they're just different types of people. Yes. yes. There might be. So it really isn't a budget thing. Yeah. It's an experience. I mean, we've found, I think you're right, there are outliers that, you know, someone who will pay more than what their budget supports for a planner, people who will spend less than what their budget supports for a planner. Um, but, you know, there is a sizable chunk of the market of people in that range who have been reaching out to 42 North for years and we haven't been able to work with that client. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the goal is that we will be able to, and even more because we've strategically built the team to have, um, you know, each of the planners have their own personal style and their so own. So you have a you have four planner team? Yes, mm-hmm. we have a four planner team. Um, each of the planners brings different strengths to the table. So like there's one planner who has a catering background like Brett's and she's a really good fit for somebody who's planning a logistically challenging build out of some kind, a private home wedding. Then there's another planner who comes from a a event design background. So she's a really good fit for somebody who has a very specific design vision and wants to work closely with a partner to build out what that looks like. That's awesome. Um, So each of the planners has their own strengths, their own vibe, and hopefully the idea is that the team keeps growing to provide a fit for anyone. I think it's also important to clarify that Francie and I are not planning these weddings. So we have built the business and created and given the girls all of the tools that they need. So we manage the back end stuff. Yeah, I mean, we handle the PR team, the accounting, the social media, all the back end business stuff that the girls don't need to be tied up with and that we know how to do and we've done it before and it's part of, you know, what we do on a daily basis. Um, And then, yes, I mean, they can crowdsource issues to one another. Um, We have weekly calls. We obviously use aisle planners so we can see what is going on with every single project. Um, But so we're sort of managing things at a high level, but we don't talk to the clients and we wouldn't be at the wedding day. We're not the client's person, right. but, but we are the planner's person. Right. Like, well, and, and this is what we hope will happen with Huxley. I don't want anyone to think, oh, because, you know, Caleb's sitting over there. He's one of our shooters. Um, Caleb is very likable, and he's a great <laughs> shooter. And I don't want anyone to think, like, and this was important to us from the very beginning, was I don't want you to feel like you got ripped off because you didn't get Jared and Jason. Mm-hmm. I want you to feel like... We created it. We crafted this product. Like, we're involved yeah. in the part that matters, which is the thing you're going to get at the end of the day. Right. That's happening in our studio with our ideas implemented. But it's, it's not – it was really important that, like, my team gets built up and that you love my team and that you love these people and your relationship is with them. Yeah. Your relationship exactly. is not with me. Most people don't even know who I am. Yeah. Have anything and to do? Yeah, with Maven want. House, I think that right now the only reason why people are connecting them is because we just launched and we're using the following that we have with Forty North to sort of let people know about our sister company. Yep. But the goal is that people would come across Maven House just on their own, and that they, I mean, if you go to the Maven House website, there's a tiny little sentence that explains that it was created by 
you know, Brit and Francia 42 North. But other than that, I mean, our photos aren't on the website. Like you really wouldn't know that. I think though you're going to find it. that a lot of couples who call about 42 North are going to be super excited yes. that there's something that you put your stamp on yes. that and they get to move into anything. Maven House. Yeah. They're totally. going to be like, oh, well, maybe you're not doing it, but you wouldn't put it out there if it was right. bad. Right. Yeah. And we are 100% training the plant, you know, the planners are working in the way that we approve of, basically. Like, it's not like they're just out doing whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we're very specific with them about how we want them to be working with clients, what the way that they should be working, you know, to plan the wedding. It's like a be, school and all almost. That. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, the girls all have a lot of experience, so they do bring their own personalities yes. and skill sets and all of that, but... You know, it's a brand at the shared end of the day. Shared values, so, yes. shared culture. Yeah, so yeah. there's certain things, you know, that we have, there are standards that they need to live up to um, yeah. that are sort of like a little bit of a 42 North stand. So let's elevator pitch it really quick. Who is Maven House for? In a <laughs> I'll let you take this one. Oh, you're going to yeah. let me take this yeah. one? We're still practicing this a little bit because we're so in it. Like, yeah. we are so in both, and there's an elevator pitch for, like, you who's asking us, and then there's an elevator pitch for, like, a potential client. client. The client is the... So, that's the real Maven pitch. House is a perfect fit for somebody who has a very strong vision for their wedding and they're really excited about planning it, but they just don't know how to get from point A to point B. Like they want that insurance policy that it will be the wedding of their dreams. Like they don't want to be like having anxiety that they know they want something really cool, but they've never done this before. They don't know anything about it. So a Maven House client is like excited to be in aisle planner and like checking off the boxes and like, you know, sourcing the vendors or collaborating with their planner to source the vendors, but they want the planner there to tell them that, yes, this is a good decision. No, that's not a good decision. I'll tell you mm -hmm. why. Um, I have read your contract and I, you probably didn't notice, but like, there's not enough time in here for you to do your dancing or whatever. Just having you, a it's experience. for a client who it's not low touch, no touch. It's like no. a highly collaborative process. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And our hope is that too with the personality aspect and as we grow the team that like we'll really be able to be matching clients with like the true perfect fit for them so whether that's a geographical you know geographic fit where like it's a Newport wedding and Sarah is in Newport so and you want to meet with her all the time so there that's perfect or like Francie was saying somebody who is doing a tented wedding they have a really strong design vision that's you know that's Sarah too um, and we also have a an other like a corporate side of this so we wanted to be able to do any kind of event not just weddings so we do have a planner based in Boston who has an extensive corporate planning background um, and so she's going to help us build up that side of the business so pretty, too. pretty much you guys are looking for you guys are there to serve anybody who wants to have an event yes and and you want to be Maybe accessible luxury? Yes. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And also just, again, like taking all of the guesswork out of it. And mm -hmm. I think for us to like naming those prices, when we decided to do that, yes, there was a little bit of part of us that was like, is this going to make people mad? Like what's going to happen if we just publish our price? I mean, because... I challenge everybody to find another company that puts their pricing on their website because that's planning. not a no, thing. A planning no, a planning company. Oh, planning company, yeah, of course planning not. Company, because, yeah. well, people want to like, act like... I think like, people think it's like the kiss of death. Like, it's yeah. going well, to Because people tell other people business. what to do. I, I said this the other day. I was like, if we would have listened to what everyone told us to do, because we didn't, there was no internet, like, when we started. There was no community around it, so there was no one to tell us what to do. If we would have listened, our business would not be one, it would probably be maybe a quarter the size mm -hmm. because we would have not published our pricing. Mm -hmm. We would have stuck to our guns and tried to charge eight grand and all these things. And we would have just listened to everyone. And here's my business advice. If you're an entrepreneur, screw all those Facebook groups. <laughs> Do what you know is right. Right. Like, I think our don't instinct told listen us that, to people. Yeah, that what people really want is just like transparency. transparency. They just, and the, and the time saving thing, mm -hmm. like, it feels funny to have to like meet someone in person, tell them all about your vision. It's like car shopping a little yes, bit, right? Yes. It's like, 
And even with 42 North, I mean, we're very direct. We have a minimum budget that we work with. We charge based on a percentage and we, you know, we, that's all in our contract and it's not, we're not shopping the But client. you're making a product though, based on years of experience, mm-hmm. knowing what people want and you're giving them what they want. You're telling, you're saying, based on all my experience, I know they want this and they want this. And, and it's not just, it's not unknowable. This, no. this whole wedding thing isn't some, every, there's a, always a project out there that's an outlier, which is all your weddings, by the way. Every mm-hmm. 42 North wedding is an outlier. Yes. And then most weddings, they follow a formula. That's not to criticize them. Mm-hmm. They're just, it's knowable. Mm-hmm. The things that can happen bad are pretty knowable. The things that could make it great are knowable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it doesn't mean, I say this all the time. What's special about your wedding is not your wedding film. It's your relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what's <laughs> unique. Yeah. That's the only unique part is you two. Right. Your right. family and you two. And we say it's client focused. And and every once in a while, we're going to do with Huxley, we're going to do some unique challenges and some things that are really special. And that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to get to do that. But I think you guys are going to be really excited to get to work in something that's kn- knowable, where you get to yes. use a different part of your brain. Oh, it's a totally different part of our <laughs> yeah. brain to be doing Maven House and to be thinking about what that client wants to see and what they want it to feel like. I mean, even just like it's been exciting building the brand. I don't know if you've had the chance to visit oh, yeah. the Maven House website, yeah. but it's just fun and loud fun. and new and young. And the Instagram is totally different. Like you wouldn't even know that they your, are related. Your messaging is curation with 42 North. It's um, high, it's, 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 it's almost finicky in the level. You say it's not, I look and go like, <laughs> anyone who cares about material, it's all about material, mm-hmm. to be honest. It's materials, um, there's like a scale to it that's, how did you turn that hill into the, mm-hmm. yeah. and the stuff on <laughs> Maven House is, is all about, it's very client focused. Yeah. It's very you it's focused. It's all about them. It's, it's all, all about, about the you. Yeah, yeah. And it's like both are all about the client, but well, that yeah. client wants the finicky. They want that level of detail. This client wants to feel like a celebrity. Unique. They yeah. want to feel special for the day, and it's all about like meeting them where they're at. Right. And I and I feel like it does a really good job communicating that message of like, if you want to feel this way, and you want this is the type of person you are. This is the type of brand we are. Mm-hmm. And if, so I feel like for you guys like. You're gonna see um, that will probably change over the years, but but in general, like you're gonna probably see there's a lot of people who like exactly that's who they are and that's what they want and it will resonate with them. Um, man, I'm super excited for you guys. Thank Thanks. you. We are too. Yeah. It's a real value add, and I always feel like the more I love it when a really great brand makes an accessible product because I know they're gonna do it better. Like when you bring something down into the market, I know it's going to be, there's going to be that stamp on it where you know it's like, it's yeah. part of that family. That's what it was. That's yeah. I mean, goal. it's our little sister. It's our cooler little sister who yeah. um, is a lot louder and more colorful and more involved in the world, what's going on in the world and not afraid to say it and all of that kind of a thing. So it's fun for us to be living that out because we've had to be so on brand for another thing for mm-hmm. so long, but that's 42 North isn't all that we are. Mm-hmm. Like we have. Well, 42 a lot North other... is you two. Yeah. But, but, it, but Maven House is, is clients. Exactly. And it's also these, these planners. I mean, the four girls sure. that we have launched with have been with us since like a week after we came up with the idea mm-hmm. and they've been such awesome amazing people. Go to, to the website. Come. Yeah. <laughs> Go check it out. If you, um, obviously, most of the people who are listening to this probably aren't potential clients. If you're a potential client, you should buy this. But, um, <laughs> but if you're a, another wedding professional and if you're a, even if you're a photographer, a videographer, you're not a florist or a planner or a designer, um, what you're really talking about is brand building here, guys. It, we're not talking about, and we're talking about clients, right? We're talking about how do we take something Think about people that we're working for. Make them happy. I always say the ideal client is the happy client. Mm-hmm. Anyone I can make happy, if someone's spending half, if the person has a half million dollars to spend on me but will hate it and will hate what I give them because they didn't want to spend it, that's not my ideal client. My ideal mm-hmm. client is whoever I can make happy. Mm-hmm. And, and like 
hopefully you've heard at least like how some brands, like how we talk about it and how 42 North talks about it. It's not really about us. We're always thinking about the people that we're serving. And like, if somebody tells you like, oh, get into your own head, think about yourself. And it, it's like, the only reason you do that is because you're trying to figure out what's authentic and what, how do I make a client happy? It's not because I don't want to make clients happy. It's like, I want to, can who I am make someone happy? I believe it can. Mm -hmm. I believe if you put out who you really are, um, it'll make someone happy. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of expressions of that. So mm -hmm. don't get stuck in a lane where whatever you're currently doing is all you can do. Like realize that like we're all multifaceted and clients are very multifaceted and there's a lot of them. And like part of the fun of being an entrepreneur is trying to, it's, how do I game the system? Yeah. Like, how do I figure this out? How do I get more money? How do I oh, yeah. get more clients? I mean, but we sat together at a low point, I think, where, <laughs> you know, a lot of people were saying to us, you guys are killing it. Like, everything you do is so beautiful. You must just be doing so well. And it's like, yeah, that's what it looks like. But meanwhile, we're kind of sitting here saying, like, we've got to do another thing. Like, we have to. Like, mm -hmm. there has to be another thing that we're doing to make money. Like, and, and it's that, just not adding up. So. That tension and that rawness yeah. probably is what produces the best things. It was a yeah. scary... We went through a couple of scary moments just like every small business owner will. It's inevitable. And I remember my husband is also a small business owner and he's been doing his own company for like almost 15 years now. And at a point when we were feeling like really shitty about ourselves he like laughed at us and he was like really like you guys are talking about like giving up like this is the first time that you have had anything feel uncomfortable you've had an easy ride where everything has just looked really good for you and so like yeah <laughs> welcome to being an entrepreneur and that was I think something that helped us like pick ourselves up and say like, okay, you're right. Like this is uncomfortable, but it comes with the territory. Yep. So let's like figure out. And what how we're do I do. think about it? Yeah. Right. Like that's what it means to be a creative. Yeah. It's not what did I make? How did I fold my napkin? How did I hold my camera? It's how did I take the situations that were facing me and find a way to turn it into something positive? Right. And, and that's it's like, how Maven House was born. I mean, it was like, okay, let's do this. And that was only a few months ago. That it was came probably up with scary it. as crap. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It but still is so a exciting, bit, yeah. like to be expressing this other side of what's going in our brain. But yeah, it's really scary. I <laughs> hope that it does well. It's gonna work. <laughs> it's gonna work. It's gonna work. So <laughs> hey guys, if you've checked this out and hopefully if you're like a wedding creative, you listen and learn about other parts of the industry. If you're a planner, welcome. Um, and if you're a client, also welcome. We all do amazing different products and so check out what we do but really we just want to say thank you so much for checking it out um there's a subscribe button and there's a like button do all those things give us a follow and definitely go ch what's what's your do you, what's your instagram handles it's 42 underscore north and maven house underscore events <laughs> right yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i always have to do that like where did i put my underscore yeah <laughs> Um, but go check them out um, and check out their websites. We'll, we'll post it all in the descriptions so you can check them out on YouTube if you're listening or watching on YouTube. If not, thank you so much for checking us out and we will see you next week. Thanks. Bye, guys.